Hey guys, what's happening? Another 3D printer came in last night. I'm actually backlogged about 10 printers. Uh, fixing 3D printers is not my primary business. I work in IT. Um, I just kind of do this as like a side hustle. Um, helps pay for my CNC hobbies and stuff. Um, Alright, so this came in last night. and um, Alright, so the guy said... Uh, uh, BL Touch. I think he. I don't know if he. No, I think he bought it used on like Facebook Marketplace or something like that, and um, or something like that. And it already had the BL Touch on it, but it didn't work. And then he said he upgraded the motherboard to the Silent Stepper step board. So one of the newer uh, Creality boards. Um, you know, thirty-two bit boards, Marlin two dot boards. Um, uh, all right. So I got to hook this up. This is obviously not wired in. Um, I like to fish the wires also through the, the sleeve here too. So I might do that. Uh, that's like a cable channel here so I might get rid of that. That's, 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 I mean it's not connected right and it's not it's supposed to be connected at both ends to make it to serve its purpose. It needs to be a cable at both ends. So I'm probably just going to take that and get rid of that. If he wants to he can put it back on. Um, all right, so let's fire this up. I mean, it looks like he had the right firmware in there, so. And then I noticed that there's some of those rubber dampeners. I, I don't personally like those. I like fixed, either print out some plastic ones or like get some metal ones. Um, that way you're not fighting two battles, adjustment part of it. Um, but I'll get my one, two, three blocks on here and get it even as much as I can. See if it does actually have the right firmware. I mean, you'll know if it actually has BL Touch if you see this BL Touch part of it. Um, all right, so let me get this reconnected again. We'll see if this even works. Right, so you guys are new to this stuff. Uh, so Creality has like their own uh, proprietary version of the BL Touch cable. It's a five-pin cable. It's all in one connector. Whereas the original ones were like a three and a two. Um, so, uh, so I just plug it back in, and if this actually is truly plugged in and working, and getting the right power and the right servo pin, it will go up and down a couple times once it gets power. Okay, that looks correct. Um, I'll do a... I don't even know if you can see that stuff in the camera. Usually it's a weird glare. Alright, so configuration, we'll do a self-test. Okay, yeah. Uh, stow. Ploy. Stow. Okay, I mean, that usually is about one, I mean, I know for this, I mean, it, they're all different, but usually this is around 1.6 for, I mean, I've worked, I've, I have upgraded so many, fixed so many Ender 3s, I know this is usually around 1.6, the offset. So, um, so what I'm going to do is go back to zero, because I don't really know, I'm going to do a test print, and I'm actually going to clean this wire, but I'm going to make it look nicer. Um, all right. Okay, so it actually is not a silent, it's not actually a Creality board, it's an SKR um, E3 Mini, which I think is actually better than the actual uh, factory, <clears throat> so I'm actually glad I looked at that because uh, I took this off. So it's actually an E3D Mini, SKR, so they do actually, actually well they do actually make the firmware for this thing, so and it looks like it's already updated. The main thing is you just gotta make sure you get the right. They make a lot of firmware, um, so they're all pretty much basically the same. Just the end stops. Like in Marlin, you define like the printer size. So if the printer size is not fine. It's not gonna home correctly. Um, all right, so I gotta fish this BL Touch wire through. All right, so this is the version two of the SKR E3 Mini, and the deal is there's only two fans and. You can't control, as far as I can remember, you can't control this fan up here via pulse width modulation. So this should be on probably constant 
the extruder cooling fan in here. Um, the cool thing is the version 3, you have three fan pin headers. So you have one for layer cooling, you have one for the extruder, and you can also have one to control that for the MOSFET cooling. Um, yeah, as far as I remember, the stock Creality hardwired... Um, I don't have to, <laughs> I know for a fact that they hardwired the actual car cooling fan into a 12 volt source. So as soon as you turn the computer on or the 3D printer on, it would come on. Um, Alright, so that has to go back to the extra fan pin header. So I guess I have two choices. I could either do. Nah, eh, I don't know if I'll do that. But I, mean, I could actually take this. If I wanted to, I could actually swip or, swatch them or swip them around. Um, you know, I could actually make the. If I wanted to, if I wanted to actually go to Marlin and custom configure this thing, I could actually put this on a pulse modulation or a control pin, and uh, yeah, make it cool. So it turns on. I say when it goes up to 60 degrees, the fan will, you know, turn on. That way, it's not running 24/7. So I'm gonna do an auto uh, home, and looks like it's going down. Um. So the guy actually did our, all the hard work already. So it looks like, the, I mean, that looks correct. It should go down. It will do a G28 home. And then I'm going to do a G29 bed level and see if it actually goes. I'm going to try to make sure I have my power. Okay. That looks good. Okay. I mean, that's uh, motion, um, bed leveling. And uh, head leveling on. That's the flower and off. C probe level bed. All right, and this is G29. So I typically like to in my G code, like in my slicer settings. Um, I actually like to add G29 or after G28. That way, every single time I do a print, um, no, I gotta make sure that it's gonna, it's gonna hit that clip. It's gonna throw the bed off. All right, so um, yeah, if it hits this clip, it's gonna throw it way off. So I'm gonna move that over a little bit. Well, a lot. This is a lot of points. Um, yeah, one of the cool things about in Marlin, I mean, actually, I prefer Clipper. Clipper's way better than Marlin. But in Marlin, you can define, like, fast probing. And for, for a bed this small, you don't need to go this many points. I would usually go three by three. All right, I'm going to let this finish, but we're looking good so far. So next thing I'm going to do is go out and do a test cube. And... Um, I'll make sure it heats up. Um, here's what I was saying: like it automatically, this fan stays on 24/7. Um, which is kind of annoying. That's cool. One of the cool things about the version three, or the, even some of the newer Crowley boards, is it's pulse width modulated. Um, but like I said, there's only two fan inputs, so and I guess I could define it. I don't know how it's defined in Marlin, so hard to say for sure. Like, I've written many, many custom versions of this firmware uh, for, like, the CR10s and CR10 Maxes, and I may actually make a lot of videos about this board. I won't go too much more into this board, but one of the nice things about the uh, SKR board is it actually has an EEPROM. So, it stores the actual Marlin settings on a flash chip on the board, whereas the Marlin or the uh, Creality board stores it on your SD card. So, if you're swapping your SD cards around, you're going to lose your settings. So that's definitely, yeah. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do that. I mean, you probably are cheap. Um, yeah, just, I mean, because I've seen a lot of people come in here and they can't figure why their settings are gone. And they've swapped their SD card and they can't figure out what's up. Alright, so you guys, if you're wondering why I charge for a print like this, I'm charging this guy 50 bucks. Um, it's not a career, you know. It's, uh, I mean, you can't charge, I mean, I can't charge $150 an hour, like IT rates, for a print that costs 150 bucks. Um, that's why I say it's more of like a side hustle. I mean, I don't know if this could be a career. Maybe if you're working on like, like some serious, like really expensive printers, but like I do actually work on really expensive CNC machines and printers. And I charge more money for that, but like the typical home user printer, you know, like this is probably $200 new. 
Um, um, even though some of these things I'll spend hours on, and I'm only charging them 50 bucks, so it's like a, it's more of a hobby. Um, all right. Um, so I'm just gonna do heat up. That's why I do before I, before I let these things go, I uh, do like a I do a calibration cube, make sure it prints. You know, look at it. And also one of the things I would do, I want to make sure it does a complete full print and doesn't stall out halfway through or whatever, so. Alright, so before I do a test print, because I don't really know for sure if this guy's offsets, um, I, I set it back to zero. Um, under motion, bed leveling, a couple different ways you can get to this one, but I need to make sure this is zero because... I don't want to grind the head into the, the nozzle under the bed. Oh yeah, you, when you you should actually when you do level the bed, you should heat it up first. Um, go back to the home G28, but yeah, before you do it, I had to move the clip over a little bit so it wouldn't in, impede with the probe. Um, but yeah, you do it when it's actually the bed is heated up because it actually will fluctuate. You know what I mean? It's thermal expansion. Alright, so I guess the offset was 2.6. Um, you know, getting this, I do a lot, I do 30 skirt layer lines just to get it, get it dialed in, but yeah, it was 2.6. So, um, yeah, the, the the offset is the difference between where this probe hits and the nozzle. You have to take it away. Yet, yeah, wherever this probe is, you have to take away the difference between that way it brings the nozzle down to the bed. Well, that makes sense. Alright, I'm gonna let this thing finish up. See what happens. Well, then I need to make sure this layer cooling fan comes on. Once it does the first layer, that has to kick on. So, if it doesn't kick on, you're going to have serious, well, PLL, you'll have issues. Alright, doing the first thing.